elements of RoboCop were the screenplay, the director, and the robo-suit. How was I to convey the robotics of a machine and the humanity of a, a man at the same time? We spent a big chunk of change, I don't remember, it might have been a million dollars, on uh, that suit. The danger of this character was that someone would say, well, you're not going to see his face, so you can put anybody in there. And I think that that's not true. You needed a real actor and, and, uh, who really took it seriously, and, and Peter really did. Peter you know, took it seriously from a physical standpoint. He studied mime, and he did this, and he developed this whole thing. And, and he, in, in retrospect, you, you can't imagine the movie without Peter. It was anyhow difficult to, 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 to find the actor because we needed somebody, as, as has been pointed out several times. I mean, it, it, somebody was a really good jawline, isn't it? <laughs> because this is this, what you see only this, isn't it? Weller was probably the best person we could get. He was a marathon runner. He was very skinny. And so when you put him in the suit, he looks like a normally proportioned person. But if you put a normally, uh, an actor with a normal physique inside that suit, he looks too big. He really captures the feeling of the robot, physically, uh, you know, vocally, everything. And you really feel like he's solid as a rock. And yet, you know, he had to really work at, work very hard at that to make you have that feeling. Orion and Mike Metavoy, my friend and a great supporter through the years, said, why don't you just find a mime teacher? I was living in New York at the time, still do. And so I interviewed five or six uh, teachers of mime, and I talked to this really gifted gentleman named Moni Yakin, who's head of the movement department at Juilliard, and he read the script, and he wanted to incorporate dance and a fluidity in it, and not just this st staccato pantomime, and so I went with him, and we prepped for about seven months. I put on football gear and would walk around Central Park and work with Moni. Rob Boutin, of course, the uh, genius, really, who's responsible for the beautiful uh, look of that suit and uh, the functionality of it, always works in clay, full size. We used to go to Rob's probably once a week, maybe twice a week in the early days of the design phase. Somehow, suddenly we started to look at uh, Japanese comic books and stuff like that, and then we started to change the design. So every time they would change their mind about the overall concept of this character, that meant that Rob Oteen would have to go out and get a whole new six-foot piece of clay and then sculpt a very detailed statue of what the final thing was going to look like, which in itself was very time-consuming. The drawings that Rob submitted initially were almost exactly you know, what, what we ended up doing. I mean, we did, there's small refinements along the way, but you, I would say that, that Rob just took it and just said, here, this is it, and everybody kind of looked at it and went, wow, that's cool. It's a bunch of different pieces, about approximately two dozen, but they're very simple. You just put them on one at a time. Essentially, what you're seeing is pieces hung from the actor. Uh, what there is under this chest plate is a harness and there's a harness that hangs from the shoulders and goes across the back and across the chest. And these pieces here were literally hung on this harness and snapped on in the back. The legs were leggings that you could actually pull on like long socks. And then you had the shoes which had little sneakers inside of them so that you could slip your feet in those and then they would be secure. The uh, hands, which were supposed to be metal, were actually a kind of a foam rubber glove that just slipped on. And then again, these pieces were just kind of snapped on in like uh, half sections. To get something that's as nice and as pretty and, and as effective as this uh, was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. From the moment that they started designing the suit uh, to the day that they actually delivered the final one was an eight-month process. After I had done the casting with Rob Boutin for the suit and for the face, we did not get a chance to try out this suit before we had to shoot with it. They had done a full body cast of Peter Weller. Then molds were pulled from the body cast. And so all the pieces basically were made for Peter's body. So I had been shooting in Dallas for two weeks, the non-robotic part of the film. And then the suit arrived, and Rob and his entire coterie showed up. And at that point, it took eight hours to put Peter Weller into the suit. It took us about 10 hours to put on the suit the first time. And it took, well, 11 hours to, to get him into the suit the first time. Moni Yakin and I had developed this very fluid-like, this legato, if you will, style of movement. 
almost like a snake. When the suit came and it was as heavy as it was, and we were already shooting, uh, I could hardly move in it. So you had two problems the very first day. The suit is very late and the suit doesn't work, at least not for Peter. Putting on the suit for the first time depressed me possibly more than anything except the end of a love affair 20 years ago that I can remember. They had to shave something off here just a little bit. Maybe they would have to break a piece off and then re-glue it over here. It was all just to make it work on Peter Weller. Once he removed the armpits and the knees and part of the heels of the feet and the neck, then I could start to work the outer shell of the suit more freely. But that still didn't give me the fluid-like movement that Moni and I had worked on for seven months. And Peter, quite rightly, became very um, vocal in uh, his insistence that he be given some time to try to figure out how now to work with this suit. Arguments ensued, what are we gonna do? Uh, I had my percentage of stuff to say, believe me in it, uh, as did Rob and Paul. So they actually shut down the production for two days. So after the first day, we were suddenly two days behind. <laughs> and uh, those two days, Peter Weller and Moni and Paul Verhoeven all worked very closely together to come up with a new way of Peter to move. We started to move the suit and Paul started to shoot tests on it. And Moni took me inside and said, look, slow everything down. It's no longer a snake, it's a beast. It's got to be big and the accents have to be huge. The dissection and the definition of the ends of these movements have to be absolutely staccato and not legato. The head has to move like bang. We'd see Peter out there in the parking lot, you know, marching around with this, you know, with his uh, movement coach um, to make it look right, you know, uh, and, and it made a big difference. He needed that time. And, and rightly so, and I think we were pissed off at him that he was, uh, let's say, in our opinion, obstructive, but I, I don't see it that way any, anymore at all. That warehouse, I just remember how difficult it was to breathe in there by the end of the day. And, and then as soon as I felt really, really sorry for myself, as I said, this was also in August and it was really hot, then I just look over at Peter Weller, and he'd be in that RoboCop suit, which was like built on a wetsuit, you know, and, and he'd just be sitting there with hoses air hoses stuck down in. He was constantly having to rehydrate himself. And so there was always the danger that, you know, <laughs> these uh, horrific conditions might take out our star. He'd lose eight to 10 pounds a day, you know, just in dehydration. Then he'd have to put it on at night. Whenever I felt bad, I just look at Peter and I didn't feel nearly as bad. <laughs> Peter's gonna hate that I say this, but I don't care. All the cast and crew got memoranda saying on set, don't refer to Peter as Peter or Mr. Weller. Don't call him by anything other than Murphy or Robo, depending on who he's playing that day. And I'd known Peter for 10 years prior, so I was like, are you kidding me? Are you joking? So, uh, so we used to tease him. You know, he'd be sitting there in the suit in between takes, and I'd say, Pete, what's happening, man? What's going on? And he'd ignore me. I'd say, Pete, I'm talking to you. I said, Peter, I'm talking to you. I know no one named Peter. <laughs> he would actually try to say that. I said, oh, come on. And then, by the way, is that the voice you're using, really? Is that how you're going to do it? Okay. In the beginning, he was so mad at actor that he didn't want me to call him Peter, but I had to talk to uh, address him and like Robocop. But I couldn't. I thought it was so silly. <laughs> I just couldn't do it, you know. I said, I'm mad at actor or not. I can't do it. I can't do it. He dropped that after, after a couple of weeks. But it was pretty